course, then my microphone falls over, too. Interesting. You didn't get to see that, but oh well. So, here we go. Happy Friday, everybody. Sorry I'm not there today. I'm at State Volleyball um, right now. Um, and so, but the nice thing with these screencasts is life gets to go on. Okay? So, because of yesterday's work with imaginary numbers, we can go on and we can do the exact same thing that we've been doing all this week, except now we can find all of our functions, or excuse me, all of our zeros of our polynomial function. Okay? So we still go through, we still figure out our list of possible zeros, plus and minus one, plus and minus two there for that one. Okay. Now, knowing what we know about these functions, we could try positive 1. It's not going to work out. We can try negative 1. It's not going to work out. I'm going to try positive 2. And the reason that I'm going to try positive 2 is because... If I look at my original function, if I grouped out an x squared from the first ones, I'd be left with x minus 2. If I grouped out a positive 1 from those, I'd be left with x minus 2. If I group out an x minus 2, then I'm left with that one. Okay? So this is by grouping. It works for this particular one. So there is why I chose positive 2. Okay? So hopefully when we do this, we get, we get that line right there. Drop the 1, multiply, add, multiply, drop the add, multiply, and we get a 0. So 2 here is a 0 which means then that x minus 2 is a factor, just like we saw over there. Okay? So that means that here that f of x can be written as x minus 2 times 1x squared plus 0x plus 1 vacuum cleaner going by out in the hallway, okay? which we got up there if we would have done this one by grouping. Still can do that. We can use all of our factoring that we've done before. Okay, We still have that if we see that. If not, just go with the rational zero theorem. Okay? So now this one, x squared plus 1, you're going to want to factor that into x minus 1 and x plus 1, but because of that addition sign right there, that is not possible. So we're factored all the way as far as we can go. So x minus 2 equals 0, so x equals 2. We found that one right up there. Okay? x squared plus 1 equals 0. I could subtract off a 1. That leaves me with x squared equals negative 1. I can take the square root of both sides. That leaves me with x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 1 we learned yesterday is i. Okay, So my three zeros for this problem, because I need it, it's a cubic function, my zeros here are 2, and positive and negative i. Okay. There's my three zeros. And I give all three of them now because we learned all about our complex zeros. Okay. And it said find all of the zeros. So there we go. Okay. 
I'm going to give the next slide. I'm going to give you about five minutes to do that one. You can work together. You can work cooperatively. You can work by yourself. I don't care. But once I once we go on that one, I'm gonna. There's going to be about five minutes of silence. So if you're watching this as a screencast, fast forward five minutes. If you're in class, which most of you are in class right now, work on it, get an answer, and then I'll go through it. Okay? Here we go. So I'll come back in about five minutes. Hopefully you've got this answer done, and then I'll go through it.
Got about 40 seconds to go. Plus you get to hear the rouser. What a great song. All right, so my zeros are, so the list of possible zeros is plus and minus one, two, three, six, nine, and 18, okay? Don't really have um, any shortcuts other than Quite possibly, what you could do is you could um, graph this one on a graphing calculator, or you're just going to have to try all these different things. Okay? People have been asking again, I don't have a graphing calculator at home. There's plenty of free graphing calculator type apps out there for you. Okay, If you don't have um, a graphing type calculator. But... For me, luckily, I have one right here that we get to see. It's 18. So there is, there it is. And it looks like we've got one at negative 1 and one at positive 2. So let's try negative 1 and positive 2 in there. So at negative 1, we've got 1, negative 1, positive 7, negative 9, and negative 18. Okay, so this 1, negative 1, negative 2, 2, 9, negative 9, negative 18, positive 18, 0. So that one worked out, okay? So that one was good. So that negative 1 that we had right there, that was good. Now let's try 2. Okay. So, but when I try 2, I'm going to try 2 here on my new factored function. Okay. Because I want to keep that going, and you'll see how I write that again here in a minute. 1, 2, 0, 0, 9, 18, 0. Okay? So it worked out. So now, because negative 1 here is a 0, and because 2 here is a 0, that means here then that x plus 1 is the factor here, x minus 2 is the factor. So f of x here can now be written as x plus 1. We got that one from right there. Times x minus 2. Got that one from right there. Let me move this over just a little bit. Times what's left over down here, which is x squared plus 9. So, again, this one here is not factorable. So we're factored as far as we can go. So we get zeros at negative 1. We knew that. Got that one off of our graph. We got a 0 at positive 2. Again, we knew that one. Got that one off of our graph. And we've got zeros at plus and minus 
3i. So the four zeros for this function are at negative 1, positive 2, and positive and negative 3i. Hopefully you got that one right. Okay. Your homework tonight, four problems. Yes, you're welcome. Okay. Here are the four problems. You're going to do page 384, numbers 14 through 18, and you're going to skip number 17. This homework will be due on Monday. Okay? So that homework is due on Monday. And don't forget your test is on 11-11, okay? which is next Friday. For the rest of the time now, you have, you can be working on homework, fixing any homeworks, fixing any formatives, etc., getting anything else, getting yourself all ready to go for next week as we push towards that chapter test. Okay? Thanks for playing along. Hope you guys have a great weekend.